So welcome back everyone. Now in recent videos I've done more content on growth based stocks and individual companies that have growth potential and in fact it's been a while since I actually spoke about my dividend portfolio. So this video today will be entirely dividend based. In the comment section below do let me know what type of material you prefer, whether it's individual growth based companies or the dividend portfolio updates. And so we'll be taking a look at all the dividends that I've received and which companies I'm allocated most to. So before we get into the video, let's just set the like count goal this week. So 34 thumbs up. All you have to do is hit that thumbs up right now and let's jump back into the video. Okay, so my dividend portfolio has actually been performing pretty well and it's doing a lot better than my growth based portfolio, but we can see on the screen we have a 20% return. So I've invested slightly over £21,000 and the return is slightly over £4,000. And so we've got a combination of individual dividend based companies where the price has increased and then we've had the smaller contribution of the reoccurring dividends that these companies pay out every month or every three months or so. Now at the moment I do this manual process where I check out the history I click on the dividends and then I manually enter all the different dividends that I receive and then I enter them into this Google Doc spreadsheet. I'll be looking at ways to automate this in the future but as I add more individual companies it becomes harder to track. Now within the Trading 2 on 2 platform we can see a breakdown of all the dividends that we've received to date. So that's £548 and 45 pence. What it doesn't tell us is a monthly breakdown or any other types of finer granularity and that's the reason why I enter into the spreadsheet and I just have some basic graphs to demonstrate how the portfolio has been performing. And so we have a breakdown of every month and we can see when I first started this portfolio we were dealing with very small amounts but if I look at the likes of November to February we've had this constant amount of slightly shy of 50 pounds and then in March we had the highest value to date so within the month there was 154 pounds of dividends that I received. Now the one thing to call out here is that I invest in Tesco and during this period there was a one-time payment of around 80 pounds and the reason was that Tesco sold a lot of their infrastructure within the Asian sector and their committee voted that alongside a reverse stock split which is where you hold less shares and the goal there is that the price will be higher or it will remain even. But even if I subtract the £80 here, March is still the all-time highest in terms of dividends received and April is still being calculated so that number I suspect will average around £50 to £60. And so while my channel has been focusing on individual growth-based companies, in the background this dividend portfolio has just been performing and really provides me with a constant amount of dividend-based income. Of course I invest that money back into more stocks and that in turn just increases the dividend process. Now let's take a look at the different breakdowns that I have. So at the bottom here we have this allocation and so if I just click on that we have the top 10 most allocated companies and so first up the highest weighting that I have is Citigroup. And so just cross-referencing on the left hand side here we can see I have 27 shares in Citi. That itself has increased by 50% and I have an allocation of 5 0.6%. And I'm not going to read them all out, but you can see the next weight in that's Main Street Capital. All in all, these top 10 companies are around the £1,000 mark. And within the other section here, that accounts for all the remaining companies. For instance, this £38 that I have in Coca Cola and all these other smaller companies. And roughly speaking, we're very close to 50%. So I just so happen to have this £1,000 allocation per company right now. And that allows me to buy into several of these companies. So I have a total of 47 investments and so that means there's 47 individual companies that I invest in. For anyone that's interested I have all them listed on the left hand side here so I'll just scroll through and you can check them out but there's nothing too exciting with these companies. They provide me with dividends. It ranges from sometimes under 1% all the way up to 10% and I'd say the average percentage and I'm just guessing here but it'll be around the 3 to 4% mark so that is just the pure dividends that I receive and the main factor that is determining the percentage growth of this portfolio is actually the increase in the underlying stock. We can see that because within the breakdown here, if I'm receiving around the £50 mark each month, 
then that's going to be around £600 that I will be able to reinvest into the dividend companies. But with a return of over £4,000, that's mainly because these companies have been increasing. For instance, check out Apple. We are over 60% with just five shares. But we have the added benefit of all these dividends trickling in each month and just providing me with truly passive income. And I know there's always this debate between growth and dividend-based companies. As you can see on my channel, I have a dividend-based account and I have a growth-based account. If you're interested in the appreciation of the underlying stock price and dividend-based portfolios do grow based on the underlying stock appreciation. But if you're not interested in dividend-based companies, then you're probably more interested in growth-based companies and the appreciation there. And that's totally fine, but there is more of a manual process when buying and selling growth-based stocks. And it's one of the things that I still really like to this day with a dividend-based portfolio is that regardless of whether the stock market for growth-based companies are increasing or decreasing, dividend-based portfolios aren't really being hit by those extremes and you're able to really project where your portfolio is going to end five to ten years from now and that's achievable by doing nothing from this point onwards. The only manual process I have and it's because I don't actually have these pies turned on but the only manual process is whenever money comes in for instance I've got some free funds available and I'll have to go and manually purchase whichever dividend-based stock that I am interested in. And that's just a limitation of trading two on two. There's fees associated when you have auto invest within the pie section. So this entire pie section here these days, I don't even put money into the pies. I just manually purchase. And the way I do it, if I see one that's underperforming, for instance, AstraZeneca down 6% at the moment, I can easily allocate to the most underperformed company. But apart from that point, it is fully autonomous. It's as close as you can be to having truly passive income. And that's one of the main reasons why people like dividend-based portfolios. And for sure, there's big YouTubers out there. Take Andre, for instance, who has claimed that he's no longer focusing on his dividend-based portfolio. And so for his situation, and he explained this within his video, but he has what's known as rich people problems. And so given that he's from the US, he doesn't have some of the protections that we have in the UK. So for instance, all my dividend portfolio is wrapped in a tax-free ISA account. However, Andre, for instance, will have to pay, and it's dependent on how much he's earning but 20 to 40 percent isn't uncommon in terms of any dividends that are received and there was another point made that when you look at growth based companies you can probably four to five x your investment now some people are able to achieve that and it generally involves really searching for that one company which can grow by four or five x or even 10 x but not everyone gets lucky picking the correct stocks and that's why for the average individual and even for someone who is known to make a lot of money from growth-based stocks, then it still makes sense to have a dividend portfolio. I'm not sure why anyone wouldn't want to have free money effectively that comes into the account every single month, rather than having to figure out which company to buy, get the timing right on the buying side, and equally getting the timing right when you sell out of these stocks. And so I definitely would encourage anyone who is considering looking into dividend-based investment to set something up. It doesn't take too long to figure out which companies to buy into. And then you can just let your portfolio grow and grow without you having to deal with anything else. And anyone who's interested in growth based stocks, definitely check those out. You'll have all the time that you need to then focus on buying and selling. But it's always a nice feeling to know that you have money coming in every month and you pretty much don't have to lift a finger. Now, the other point to make when it comes to dividend-based portfolios is that, of course, I can talk about when I add new dividend-based companies or when I decide to sell out, but that does get boring pretty quickly. That's one of the reasons why YouTubers out there will look at the growth-based companies, just because it's a little bit more entertaining. And so that's one of the reasons why I have switched and spoken less about dividend-based investment, but equally let me know in the comments below if you're interested in updates, whether it's every month or every two months. And for anyone that's new to the channel, if you've seen any of the other videos out there, I focus on growth-based companies, dividend-based portfolio updates, dividend stocks, so there's a combination there. I would like to get a sense of what I should focus my energy on going forwards, but those are the types of topics that I continue to push content out. So do let me know in the comments below what you are interested in. So definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. New videos are out each week, and with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.